Uh, today I'm going to quickly run through Sly, which is a REPL for Common Lisp. The, it's an alternative to Slime, but uh, it's my personal preference, and I believe it is just a fork of Slime. But uh, yeah, I'll just quickly go through it. So obviously, we've got the code that I've got written here. I've already loaded the package up. So this does sort of imply you've already got a system that's running. You have sort of an understanding of um, packages or whatnot. But anyway, you can uh, just you know add uh, stuff at the very top level. You can like, call a function like we'll call print we'll print x. All right, that's easy enough. But the thing is, you can click on it, right? So you can click on it, and then you can actually inspect it. You can see up here. It's telling you what type it is, although, and it can tell you, tells you plenty of information about the object. Uh, also, if we were to do something like, uh, let's just try and make it error. So we'll format, and we'll give it something that it won't be able to print. So we'll give it an array like this. One, two, three, four. It won't be able to print that, right? So it's fallen into the debugger. So it's told us here, debugger entered on case failure, expected a simple string. And, but we gave it a simple, we gave it a simple vector. So uh, if we look over here, we've been told exactly what error it was. So um, what's happened is we've called format. It's recognised it's wrong, and it's signalled a condition which is now being picked up by the debugger because nothing's handling, no code at the top level is handling the condition. Um, and so it's even telling us the types so we could catch it again. And it uh, also has a complete backtrace. So we can see here, look, so this is the stream it was trying to print to. We've got args, original args. And this is the f this is the string or function, or in this case, the array. We can even inspect the arguments in the error condition. So on the backtrace, you can inspect what went wrong, which is uh, pretty crazy, in uh, my opinion. Like, I don't. Uh, don't know how if there's any other repls you can do that it may be closure I don't know but uh, I think it's pretty cool like um, you can also give it restarts right so restarting is a way of handling um, this is certain it's one way of handling conditions you can offer restarts to people or to programmers it's like you can click retry or whatever but it's not gonna work so we'll just cancel out and quit that's one thing there's also lots of other things like we have uh, back references which you don't have in slime. So in here a case down here it said we have 30 values. So maybe we'll just find number one. Number one. So that's what's number two? Nil. Number three? It's even telling us at the bottom uh, what it is. And we can even pass those in to we can even pass those as arguments to functions. Right? This there's also the normal, which is, I believe, also in Slime, where you can just do star, and that just ref the first star references the f most recent return value, double is the second most, and the, the three is the third most, etc. So, I showed you the error inspector. Let me show you the object inspector. So if we go, I will show you this is a class I've defined called connection. It's IP port socket, socket stream, and some accesses. If we quickly make an instance of it using this function, I've already written this. So we'll uh, I'll just go back in the history, which is another thing. You can use an iSearch, which uh, is a function in Emacs that allows you to search through one, one point at a time based on you know, in this case, I, to I wrote make, so I could now go through and find all of the ones referring to make. Ooh. Oop. Oops. So, yeah, and you can go with forwards as well. Anyway, so if we make an instance, and if we click on it, now we're inspecting the object. We're inside, we're looking at the object in memory. Right, we can see that we've got IP, got the port, whatever, these are unbound. We can also click class, and we can now see all its superclasses, and we can see everything about them as they are running in memory right now. Uh, if we quit out of that, and I will modify one of the slots. I also did this, so I'm going to modify the slot socket, which we just saw, right? So socket's unbound, so we're going to modify it, and then we'll click on it, so it's just returned 
three is just what that does. Now you can see it's also, we didn't reinstantiate the object, we simply modified it in memory. And now the inspector again is showing us the, uh, the modified version, which is again, pretty crazy, right? So uh, we change back to this, uh, to this file. There's other things you can do. You can compile with like control CC. You can do, um, you, can you can compile entire files, control CK, etc. You can just define functions at the bottom, defund x, or we'll do x, y, and we'll send x, y, and simply print x, y, and then control CC. Ooh. And then we'll do x, y, a, b, c. See? Delete that, we don't need that. There's um, other things as well, right? So let's see, I used setf earlier, okay? And it, uh, do I use setf anywhere in here? Yep, so I use setf, so I use setf and it returned re. So we can push control C, D, H, and that will open up here. This opens up the um, documentation on the common list hyperspec provided by Lispworks. So it's basically a reference to the ANSI standard, basically. Um, so now we can see the symbol, we can go through, we got, because we used a macro like that, it's uh, come up with a one with its own options when you click on it. But if we do it on defun, it'll just come up with the function defun and you can read through the documentations, etc. That's um, You can also see it up here. So there's the, uh, or is it documentation, lookup symbol, or describe symbol, lookup documentation. There's loads of things. There's loads of other things you can do. For example, well, we just went through the menu, but look, n up to x. So this is a function. We'll see if we do n up to x. And so we're going to go from 0 to 100. Yeah, we can inspect it, etc. We can see everything about it. We can also, if we look at the menu, do what something called who calls who calls n up to x, and now it's telling me that handle up to, which is here, is the one that calls n up to x. If we do that again, I have, oh, I shouldn't have it highlighted. We do n up to, we do who calls, handle up to, tells me that generate fuzzy list. You can even click on it, and it tells you exactly in the source code where it is. You have to be a little careful, because if you do something that's defined by the system, like defined by SBCL in my case, or your common list distribution, it will try and tell you where it is in code, like where it is in the source code, and then it will have a bit of a problem. So it works best when you're trying to uh, find out where your own definitions are, who's calling who with your own function, your own function definitions. Um, there's other things like you can do macro expansion. You can do this. You do it normally with this function, right? So you would normally do macro expand one, so it'll expand it once, and then you'd give it the form. But you can do it here as, again. Where is it? Uh, macro expand, Ooh. and it pops up in the next buffer and shows you what it looks like when it's expanded, which is crazy. It's really, really cool. Right, just kill that buffer. Obviously, there's key bindings to do all this. You don't have to. I'm just clicking on it so you can see. So we'll get an idea of what's going on. It's uh, really powerful. Um, yeah, I show you. Maybe we've got compilation. Yeah, so there's also another thing you can do, which uh, is really useful. Like when combined with Emacs tramp mode. So Emacs tramp mode, hundreds of videos about it, but it lets you basically connect to remote files and remote systems and edit them like they're on this system here. But you can do the same with Sly or, and Slime. You can you can set up a Lisp image that runs this server. So this here, this REPL in this buffer is connected to a server that's running on an image, on, on a, in my case, steel bank common Lisp image. But you can set, you can run one of these, um, in Sly, it's called Slink. You can run this Slink server on a remote machine, and you can SSH into the machine. You know, use a bit of port forwarding, 
and then you can remotely edit you can remotely access the image on the remote on the remote machine and you can do everything i've just done you can do everything that sly allows you to do you can do all the compilation you can use tramp to edit the files and then you can compile them straight into those images so if you're connect if you wanted to connect to your server and your server has like five common list files you could you could use tramp to connect to the five files and then on your on your sly you can connect to the slink server with uh it's a rem it's a sly like remote or something S or sly connect sorry and then obviously i don't have one right now i'd have to do the port forwarding but i'll make a video on doing remote development with slink and sly because it is amazing it makes doing things like web dev in common lisp common lisp web dev not the same as like using apache but it makes it uh, very very easy and very interactive so you can modify websites while they're still running uh etc anyway i hope i uh have enlightened you a little bit into the awesome power of the common lisp repl in this case sly although there is slime uh and you may consider using it Thank you very much. Cheers.